against Harlan Fear, number 14. We'll give him the green light. We'll be underway here in just a moment. We are underway here at the Season 1 Invitational at SCG Con Summer. And it is a Llanowar Elves to start here for Harlan Fear. Next up is a Paradise Druid and an attack here for one. For AP, just started things off with a Swamp. Now, you did mention that interaction between Basilica Bellhaunt and Nullhide Ferox. That's a thing that could come up in this matchup. Yeah, although with... Uh if you're having this level of mana here, likely to be cast, but... This will be a Rekindling Phoenix. Paradise Druid's going to come in here for two. And this is a tried and true strategy in Magic, right? Something we've seen over the years, which is mana acceleration into large green and red threats. Sometimes it's green and white threats, but mana accelerant plus big creature. As there's Teferi. Well, Teferi does a nice job against big creatures. Bounce that draw card. Rekindling Phoenix will be back shortly, I'm sure. But this is not the worst Teferi here for Fear, and uh, you know part of the reason I, I think you want to be playing with Lena War Elves is one, getting out in front of the battlefield is so important, and two, just having a creature that can finish off Teferi Time Raveler or other Planeswalkers that set themselves down to one loyalty is really important for keeping the momentum going. Command the Dreadhorde, the draw there for Ape Corrigan. Again, number one on the SCD Tour leaderboard. If we ended things today, he'd be headed to the Players' Championship, and it's still very likely that he will be headed that direction and something, unless something, pardon me, goes seriously wrong for him this weekend. Yeah, I don't even know what that would look like. It a would take a lot. And then a finals and top four from the people behind him. It's not locked up. No. But unlikely. Oath of Kaya and Teferi in hand here for Abe. Looks like he's going to play Teferi again. Bounce. That Rekindling Phoenix. Play a Watery Grave tap. Draw a card, of course, from the Teferi activation. We head back over to Harlan, who's drawn. It looks like a mountain for the turn. So Harlan flooding out a little bit. Land of War Elves will take care of the Teferi. Paradise Druid will deal Abe two. And now here is Rekindling Phoenix for a third time. Follow that up with Land of War Elves, and it's a full battlefield. One card that Harlan does not really have to concern himself with because it's a card that's kind of slid out of the format is Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, that was a staple of Esper Control, but these mid-range decks playing a lot less of it. <laughs> here is Teferi, here of Dominaria, says, get out of here once again, Rekindling Phoenix. This Teferi is going to die too, I'm sure, as a mountain was the draw there for Harlan. You can easily pick off that Teferi. But Abe isn't doing a bad job here of basically, you know, making some exchanges and then setting up a decent command, the Dreadhorde. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the strength of the Planeswalkers come from, uh, in part, because the floor is so high. Uh, even in the spots where they are, you know, bad, like the Teferi Time Ravelers and the Hero Dominarios, Corrigan still got to draw a card or interact with something on Fear's side and force some action from Fear. That's as bad as they get. Mm -hmm. Nullhide Ferox, the play there for Harlan Fear before passing the turn back over to Abe Corrigan. Abe taking a long look at his hand. Because he's, he's in a little bit of trouble here. Now, again, he does have Command the Dreadhorde in hand, but... That one does require more life to work with than 10 in most instances. And this isn't a Command the Dreadhorde deck that has Wild Growth Walker and the Explore package. Just a great, great game for Lena War Elves here so far. Been very important for Fear. It's looked good. I think one thing that we have kind of underestimated or forgotten is just how good Lena War Elves is. And this, you know, we talk about all these Planeswalkers and everything that's going on. This here is. Oath of Kaya taking care of Paradise Druid. Land of War Elves is still one of Magic's very best cards. And especially now with, with there being so many Planeswalkers that sets themselves down to one. Game is played uh, just about presence on the battlefield and being able to pick off at low opportunity cost. And Land of War Elves is all that. Big attack there from Harlan with the Nullhide Ferrix and the two Land of War Elves and a Paradise Druid to follow things up with. Lava Coil and Mountain in hand for Harlan, and he'll never even get to cast him. As Harlan Fear is going to win game number one here over Abe Corrigan. Gruel Aggro up a game relatively quickly there over Esper Superheroes. And again, the thing about Gruel Aggro, nothing fancy. No. Nothing fancy. Mana acceleration, green red mana, big dum-dums. Good enough to get the job done, right? Yeah, I mean, that was exactly how you draw it up on the play with mana acceleration. Corrigan on the back foot the whole time, never gets to untap with a Planeswalker, has to use his Planeswalkers just to keep his head above water, and uh, Fear's Threat's just too fast, too big. 
The sideboard here for both players. We're going to start with Abe Corrigan, number one, once again, on the SCD Tour leaderboard. Down a game right now, though, is the member of Team Lotus Box. You'll find two Kaius Raths in his sideboard this weekend, along with two Dovin's Veto, two Cry the Carnarium, two Duress, two the Elder Spell, three copies of Lyra Dawnbringer. That's a tough one for them to beat. And then two copies of Night Vale Predator, the black, black, blue, blue, flying Death Touch creature. What do we think here for Abe? Uh, I really like the uh, Kai's Wrath, the Lyra's. And I, I could be talked into 3 3 Flying Death Touch here, too, I think. I think so. Just to uh, trade off with anything, hold off the mana creatures. That plus a Planeswalker is not an easy position for, for fear to assail. Lyra is a card that a lot of decks appear to be pretty soft to at the moment. We'll see if Harlan's got some answers here in 4 Thrashing Brontanon. Two Carnage Tyrant, two Collisions Colossus, so there are some answers to the Flyer. Two Shiv and Fire, two Galta, Primal Hunger, another Lava Coil, a Mobilized District, and a Vivian Reed, a card that does not see much play anymore at all. So I like the Vivian Reed here. Uh, the Carnage Tyrants and the Collision Colossus is a little hedge for Flyers. Uh, I don't know how much uh, removal Fear wants to leave in his deck here. Um, he's got three shocks and three lava coils. He can get away fr from that stuff a little bit, I would imagine, um, and bring in some stuff for a, a longer game. But I don't think you want to be on zero removal spells because uh, Corrigan's going to have some stuff, especially on the sideboard. Well, these are the options here for both players, and game number two will be underway here shortly between number one and number 14. I think we're going to have a lot of matchups of players with numbers next to their name this weekend here at our Season 1 Invitational. But for now... We got to sell you some stuff like the SCG Con Summer Sale. Oh, boy, do you know these cards? There's some old ones here. Uh, yeah, Exorcist, Power Artifact, Lightning Bolt, and Jihad. These are some old. What, what are, what, what, I don't even know what set most of these cards are from. Uh, the Dark, uh, Exorcist is the Dark, Power Artifact is Antiquities. That's an Alpha or Beta Lightning Bolt, and then Jihad is from Arabian Nights. Look at you. Look at you. I know these cards. You, this yeah, is my childhood. This is why you're here. Yeah. I don't. I know Lightning Bolt. I actually don't think I know what the other three cards do. Okay. And they don't show up in coverage very much. Well, uh, Power Artifact shows up a little bit. That's a combo. It's with, been a minute. But that, that's a card that has shown up. We have probably covered a match at some point in our life involving Power Artifact. I don't think that's true of either Jihad or Exorcist. I know we've covered a match with Transmute Artifact. I don't know about Power Artifact. We have. Really? All right. It was probably Greg we, People, People back in the day played some bad Legacy decks. That's true. Anyways... That's true. Star City Games got sale. Head over to the website. Check out what's on sale. We're done with the categories. Just put stuff up there. Yeah, you want cheaper cards? This, boom. This is a this got some old school flavor to it, which I appreciate. Uh, getting ready here for game number two between Harlan Fear and Abe Corrigan, number fourteen, number one, respectively, on the SD Tour leaderboard. This is, I think, so. This is um, either third or fourth SCG Con summer, maybe fifth SCG Con summer that I've done. Biggest one we've done yet. Well, we got the whole Berglund Center. Yeah. 470-ish in the main. We'll get an exact total for you soon. And Pete Hoffling came by, and we were we said, you know, look at this room because we got all the people in the event, and then off to the side, the side events are already firing, a bunch of sealed deck going on and all that. And he's like, we got the other side of the building too. This is only one of the buildings that we have where something's right. going on, so i got to go over across the hall during my break. Check out all the action. A lot of people here hanging out at the Bergen Center in Roanoke, Virginia. Sadly, some people couldn't make it, but hopefully you guys are hanging out with us here all weekend long as we're going to crown an invitational champion. We're going to punch some tickets to the Players' Championship. Some players are going to be joining Joe Lissette later this year at the Players' Championship at the Star City Game Center in lovely Roanoke, Virginia. As we are underway here in game number two, Abe Corrigan's going to start things off with a watery grave. Harlan, no man acceleration, just a stomping ground that will enter the battlefield tap. There's a hero of Precinct 1, and this is what you talked about, about these Esper decks. You've got to be proactive. Yep. I mean, uh, Corrigan took a long time to get on the battlefield productively, and uh, Fear did not let up after his uh, mana accelerated start. Growth Chamber Guardian is the true two drop there for Harlan. Pardon me. So both players did have something to do with the early stages of this game, and now it makes you wonder what Abe is going to do on his third turn as he starts to think things over a little bit. In his comfy new chair. Yes. There is a swamp. This is a Narset, Parter of Veils, one of the most powerful cards from War of the Spark. Take a look at the top couple of cards. The last one was a hit. That is a Thought Eraser. Those cards will go randomly to the bottom of Abe's deck, and he'll pass it back. If you are curious what these players are playing, Cardboard Live is your friend, and they help us with our tournaments. As here comes Growth Chamber Guardian. 
And this was the hesitation you saw from Corrigan. A little bit of a rock and hard place here. He's got to choose between the Narset or the Captain. Gonna let the Narset go. Narset will go as the Growth Chamber Guardian will adapt. So it is a 4-4 now, and another Growth Chamber Guardian in hand that I suppose could be taken via Thought Eraser as we head back over to Abe Corrigan. Again, the deck lists are available on Cardboard Live, and they will be available all weekend long. Every single round of action we do bring to you. So if you do want to see what some of these players are playing this weekend, up to and including this uh, very innovative modern deck that Peter Ingram, Edgar Magayesh, and some others have brought to the table. I'm sure we'll have a future match of that later on. A little Devoted Druid combo action that apparently some players have been doing very well on Magic Online with. I'm excited to watch it. For now, we turn our attention to this game and match, and of course this very, very fun standard format. As Corian, again with many options. The games of this standard format, they're not easy to play, partner. No. I mean, uh, and, and Corrigan's got some awkwardness here that you could play. It looks like his turn, if he played the Thawrish, that would just be the whole turn. And uh, Corrigan not interested in doing just that. So another Nara set here, and then maybe Chump Block. Maybe just let it go. But again, the floor on these Planeswalkers is so high uh, because they all come with a card attached to them. Speaking of Planeswalkers, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, is the card that Abe has found. He'll get in here for two with his Hero of Precinct 1 as he's got no interest in blocking. And we will head back over to Harlan, who will draw a card. It's a copy of Carnage Tyrant. So Harlan's gone a little bit larger. He'll start by taking care of another copy of Narset. This will be a Growth Chamber Guardian. But unfortunately for Harlan, no land to play. And if Corgan has land number five for Teferi, Hero Dominaria, he is in a commanding position here. Looks like he's going to go to Thought Eraser first, and he will get a token here from Hero of Precinct 1. Yeah, Corgan here wants to make the battlefield just a little gummed up, so he has protection for his... Uh, Series of Planeswalkers. For Harlan, that hands two copies of Skark and Hellcut. I see a Rekindling Phoenix, a Carnage Tyrant, a Collision Colossus, a Nullhide Ferox, and a Vivian Reed. I wouldn't select the Ferox if I was Abe, but everything else is uh, pretty good to choose. This is a very expensive hand here for Harlan. No mana acceleration and no mana. Yeah, he sideboards into a pretty big deck, and uh, you know he is he is pretty heavy on, on expensive plays to begin with. Um, fortunately for him, he's had the Growth Shaper Guardian to... to use his mana productively here while he's waiting for land number four. Um, but with Corrigan threatening Teferi Hero Dominaria, next turn it's very important for Fear to add more to the battlefield. So Corrigan's going to consult his hand before making the selection. Again, two copies of Skark and Hellkite, a Nullhide Ferox, which you don't want to choose with Thought Eraser. Collision Colossus, Vivian Reed, Rekindling Phoenix, and Carnage Tyrant are the cards that Harlan Fear is working with. And again, Abe Corrigan will select one of these. It looks like he's going to go with Vivian Reed. That will hit the graveyard. Vivian, you got to remember that previous standard format before War of the Spark, one of the best cards to be casting. And this one sees very little play. Yeah, as here's here is an Oath of Kaya, trigger the hero, get another token. And here's an attack for two. Was a ubiquitous feature of the format, but now with grid, green mid-range not as much of a factor, see very little of it. As you uh, like to say, meta games are ecosystems, and yeah. for this one, There's Vivian no, Reed not very good. No absence of powerful cards. Yeah. In this format, you can only play with so many of them, so things are going to cycle in and out depending on the particulars of the meta game. But it doesn't mean the cards weak or strong. It's just you know there's a lot to consider. This will be an attack here for four. Looks like no interest in blocking. Now here is a big old Null Hide Ferox. So we're going to head back over to Abe Corgan. He's got five lands, a Hero of Precinct One, an Oath of Kaya, and two tokens from the Hero. Looks like Lyra Dawnbringer was drawn, but he knows that Harlan has a copy of Collision Colossus in hand, so it's not ideal right now. And I think Fear they're going with the Ferox over the Rekindling Phoenix to try to make the battlefield as good against Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, as possible. The Rekindling Phoenix just gets sent back, and then Corrigan's got a ton of chump blockers to work with for the Growth Chamber Guardian. So uh, Fear here just trying to set up a slightly better board here uh, in the event that Corrigan plays the five-mana Planeswalker. First things first, Corrigan will play an Isolated Chapel. He's reaching for some mana. Looks like five of it. And now here is Teferi. 
So the powerful Planeswalker will bring a token along with it, thanks to Hero of Precinct 1. It'll start on 4 loyalty, and the Elevator might be going up to 5 here in just a moment. And it will go up to 5 as Corrigan will draw a card. He'll untap a couple of lands here from the Teferi. And pass the turn back over to Harlan. Harlan with a Nullhide Ferox, a Growth Chamber Guardian that's already been adapted. And he's drawn another land. So now he's up to 5 mana, which means that Skargan Hellkite is an option here for our Gruul Aggro player. And keep in mind that uh, Fear is getting close to Carnage Tyrant as well. Uh, not an easy card for Corrigan to handle. And that Lyra in his hand is shut off because of the Collision Colossus. So a lot of eggs in this Teferi right now. That basket... Uh, if Fear is able to pressure Teferi sufficiently, Corgan's leftovers are not very good. A couple of different ways you can build Gruul Aggro. You can certainly play more Planeswalkers if you'd like. There's, uh, as you mentioned, no shortage of good options and powerful cards. But players are electing to go towards this beast in Nullhide Ferox, 4 mana 6-6 six, six, Hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells, so Harlan can't even cast the Collision Colossus right now anyway if he wanted to. Well, he can pay the 4. He, he can, if, if Corrigan commits his turn, it's trivial to pay two and then pay two. Now here's Skargan Hellkite. He will go to the flyer and get into the red zone with it. Find out here in a moment if it's going after Corrigan or Teferi. Looks like they're all at Abe. Doesn't care about Teferi. Or it just might be too hard to take down in combat this turn. Corrigan's got too many chump blockers. And with the Oath of Kaya on the battlefield, you don't want to break up the Planeswalker attacks into multiple turns. You want to avoid as many of those triggers as possible. So Fear could say, this turn, I really can't get to the Teferi, and the attack on you is plenty good. It's going to deal either a ton of damage or you're going to lose some chump blockers. And maybe next turn it'll change where an attack on Teferi gets a little bit more attractive. Another thing to keep in mind with these decks is they play a lot of copies of the same Planeswalker. So there's some times where you just want to let it go for a little while because you don't want to invest a lot of resources getting uh, Hero of Dominaria off the battlefield only to just unlock a second copy. Well, Abe's going to start here by attacking with the Hero of Precinct 1. The follow-up play will be the Lyra. Untap a couple of lands and pass the turn back. Not sure if he's expecting this creature to live or not, given the information that he has, but perhaps maybe he has some sort of counterspell in hand. Harlan's going to pay the two for Nullhide Ferox, and there is Collision Colossus. The Collision Half, of course, will take care of the Flyer. Maybe that's all Abe had to do. I mean, Abe's leftovers look pretty bad. I think it's just two lands and another Hero of Dominaria. Yeah, not doing great is Abe Corrigan right now. Back to Abe Corgan we go. Okay, well, another copy of Lyra is interesting. I believe he also drew another Kaya this turn. In sorry, there. Kaya's, excuse me, Kaya's Wrath. Kaya's Wrath? Yeah. Okay. Here is the attack. Players will make sure their life totals are square. And Skargan Hellkite, Rekindling Phoenix, and Carnage Tyrant are the cards that Abe does know about. He wants to make sure he's got his information correct. There's an isolated chapel. And it does look like Kaya's Wrath is in hand. And it's a good time to cast it. So that's going to clear everything away. Corrigan's going to make a token from Hero of Precinct 1, and then two creatures will die. So he's going to get a little, little bit of life in this exchange. Untap a couple of lands from Teferi and pass the turn back over to Harlan. Harlan will draw a card, picks up another land. Is it time to go towards Carnage Tyrant, or do we go towards a big dragon? Real Spellbreaker isn't bad either. And that can finish off Teferi. Oath of Kaya will trigger... So some life will be exchanged, but Teferi is off the battlefield now as we head back over to Abe Corrigan. Yep. Fear there. Uh, looks like he's settling in for the a possibility of a, a much longer game here uh, because he elected to take care, use the Tef get rid of the Teferi rather than use his mana as efficiently as possible. Well, it's not a bad turn there for Abe. It's two flying creatures. One of them is a Night Veil Predator. 
That one's got Flying and Death Touch. The other is a Lyra Dawnbringer. Both quite potent on this battlefield. And you're seeing uh, in game number two, with Corrigan being able to get something on the battlefield early on and, and uh, make fear expend resources in combat like that, the Planeswalkers, even if they don't run away with the game, even if we're not talking about Teferi Emblem, they generate so much value that uh, Corrigan easily able to win with his sweepers and then the flying leftovers. Kaya's Wrath, a card that's not seeing a ton of play right now, but it was very useful there, cleaning up the battlefield and allowing Abe Corrigan to clean up that game. We're all tied up here. One to one as we get ready for our third and final one between Esper Superheroes and Gruel Agro. Esper Superheroes is what Ben Friedman, your Grand Prix Kansas City champion as of last week, and has coined this deck because it's a combination of those kind of Esper Hero, Esper Midrange decks and those Esper Super Friends decks. As he does have 12 Planeswalkers here, does Abe and Narset and eight Teferis. And then he's found a room for a little bit of Hero of Precinct 1 action, the card that allows this deck to continue to be very proactive. Yeah, and it's such an important point. Even if it comes with some liabilities in the mono-red matchup, it just dies for no value sometimes. Um, these games are so much about the ability to attack and defend Planeswalkers, and the Hero does both of those things very well. Well, before game number three begins... The month of June is already here, which means we've got a new one here for the StarCityGames.com Creature Collection, and it is Makeshift Mischiefs. Looks like some creatures are up to no good there. These, uh, this, this collection here, pardon me, is available in playmat sleeves, and best of all, player bundles. Yeah, you get it all. That's Put right. All together at go.starcitygames.com slash creature collection. That's where we, uh, we've been doing creature collection for like five or six years now. At least, yeah. yeah they're all there. Everything is there. It's a good thing that camera works. Otherwise, that'd be bad. I'm feeling these seats, man. You're a little too comfy. Oh. If the people at home could see me right now, <laughs> put my foot up on the table. <laughs> a little too, little too cozy. Hands crossed behind the head, the whole thing. <laughs> Unwinding. Oh, I see Andrew Backstrom is a fan of us in suits plus gaming chairs. Yeah. You're on the cl he's on the clock right yeah, now. Yeah, your comment is smart. Get back to work. Get back to work. Yeah. I like that. That's smart. A lot of players here in our Season 1 Invitational. You can't see them like we can. But we've got about 470-ish, give or take, as we get that final number worked on. And we got a lot more than that here at the Berkland Center in Roanoke, Virginia. This place is packed, and it's Friday. I know. We're not even in. We're not even yeah. Saturday where it's really going to be packed. So awesome turnout here and an awesome start here for Harlan Fear with Atlanta War Elves on turn number one. Next up is Paradise Road. This is very reminiscent of the game one start. Except now Fear has to concern himself with Kaya's Wrath. We go back over to Harlan. He would like to play a turn three dragon. Skargan Hellkite will resolve. And it's going to come into the red zone. So as far as starts go, if you're Harlan, you've got to be happy. Scargan. Yeah, so you get to choose between a 4-4 flying haste or a 5-5 flyer that uh, can pay some mana and shoot some things. Two good deals. <laughs> Two. Two good deals. That's right. Carlin hasn't seen a ton of play, but it's starting to. I mean, this is definitely a powerful card. It's a mythic. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just, uh, you know, how much interest is there in playing five mana? It, so a lot of the more expensive cards, they just get kind of collapsed into the Planeswalkers because they're so much better on rate than the other stuff. Uh, Harlan's uh, making it interesting here uh, by playing with enough mana acceleration, and the interest in threatening his opponent's life total makes this comparable on rate to the Planeswalkers, but... It's hard for these cards to show up, given how good the Planeswalkers are. It looks like we have a Dom reciting, and now some more beatdowns. So, not a bad draw here for Harlan Fear, as Abe Corgan's got some real catching up to do. You had mentioned Kaya's Wrath. Abe, uh, Abe might need that right now. And the, the Domri here gives him some infrastructure to rebuild with in the event that Corrigan has it. And there's some indication that he may not have it because he used Oath of Kaya last turn. 
on a creature that would just get swept up this turn. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see 4-4 four, four flying haste for 5 still just be, like, that's not a bad deal. That's a thing you can do? That's not a bad deal. Yeah. And a nice little planeswalker thrown into a Domri Anarch of Bolus. A couple copies of Hero of Precinct 1. Well, setting up for a big turn, ideally, is Abe Corrigan as we head back over to Harlan Fear. Mobilized District looks like the land for the turn. That's pretty important, too, folks. As here's another dragon. It's just another good leftover here if uh, Corrigan has Kai's Wrath. Yeah. little fighting will take place there. Atlanta War Elves trades with the Hero of Precinct 1 because of Domri's text, giving the creatures a little bit more power when attacking. And that one mobilized district might lock Corgan here out of being able to re to stabilize this with Kaya's Wrath. Well, here's the hope, right? You're hoping that Lyra Dawnbringer is going to be good enough to stabilize this battlefield. It might be. There's your block. There's your activation. Go up to six. Attack with everybody. And that is going to do it. So Abe Corgan is going to pick up the loss. And more importantly, Harlan Fear is going to pick up the win as Gruel Agro is going to take care of Esper superheroes. Harlan Fear on the board. Abe Corrigan, if you're.